Hey there, my fellow learners. Thanks for joining me again for this third of three lectures and discussions over allegory and propaganda in Animal Farm. Let's finish up the allegory side, starting with the Russian church. Karl Marx, the philosopher, referred to religion in the communist state as really as the opiate of the people. He considered it to be a lie, but one that should be tolerated within communism because it, it could be used to the party's advantage to make the people not complain and do their work and therefore not rebel. Stalin particularly recognized this last advantage. The intellectuals here, of course, are the most educated class, and they recognize that the leaders were, were not about revolution and change and equality, but instead were power-hungry for themselves. The intellectuals remain skeptical that any revolution results in an actual change in equality, and, and they recognize that power was really contrary to the notion of the equality of everybody, a very vital tenet of communism. And they recognized how the party used propaganda to mislead the proletariat. The whip, again an actual element in Animal Farm at the very end, um, is used to represent in the Soviet Union the armed police of the party. But let's extend that on your worksheet, the graphic organizer, and also include the dogs. They really are that, that armed force. They're not really police, though. Their, their job really is not to enforce the laws, but to use violence to force support, uh, in this case, for the leader and for the country. They would beat uh, or kill the disobedient, and sometimes even the disobedient party's family. So they held quite a threat over the people. Let's look now at the propaganda side as you flip your page over. And remember, we want thorough answers, so make note of the, of the clues and the hints here that are trying to provoke deeper understanding. Let's look first at the purges here, and a, and a purge is an attempt to eliminate politically or, or culturally any opposition or unwanted element, usually through exile, execution, or imprisonment. Now, the added benefit to getting rid of any opposition is that the uh, totalitarian dictator can use this to quote-unquote persuade others to never do anything that crosses the line. It's a way of keeping the populace in line. And it's also an exercise of power. Why? Simply because the totalitarian dictator can. He or she has that level of power. Um, you will want to look specifically at these pages and, and paragraphs here in addition to what was printed on the worksheet for a clearer understanding. And particularly, let's add to the propaganda involved here that the hens who die reportedly of this disease in reality were executed. So this claim is not the truth. I think you can identify that propaganda technique. Let's go on and look at the song, uh, The Beasts of England Being Replaced. Now this is the song of rebellion and it's replaced by a song that pledges support to Napoleon and to Animal Farm. So, hmm, why would the leaders not want this idea of rebellion inherent in the song in the minds of the populace, particularly as conditions get worse and worse? I think you can understand that. So you can see what the pigs are looking to accomplish. What propaganda technique is this? Well, they use this method of putting in the minds of people uh, the song and the words that promote support and pride for leaders and country. Animal Farm, after all, is their country. In number 11, you can name this one and you can identify what changes. And that's very evident as you look at the commandment. Again, be sure to compare to the wording of the original if necessary. You can recall, I believe, which technique it is that rewrites what was done or said or established as historical fact. And of course, the original commandments are historical fact. 
what are the pigs looking to gain? Well, they do, as you see, allow themselves access to something that was considered to be human and therefore forbidden. Although Napoleon, it was, and the other pigs thought at first uh, that Napoleon was dying, and perhaps you can see through the circumstances and symptoms here, I think you recognize what it is they're after. Let's look at food distribution here, and I'd like you to turn in the book there to chapter 9 and find the third paragraph and read through that long paragraph before continuing. Now, Squealer at this point speaks to the animals, so you know something's up, this time about food rations, and he says, uh, the text says that he had no difficulty in proving to the animals that they were not in reality short of food, whatever the appearances might be. Well, hmm, if the appearances uh, need to be addressed, then evidently they do suggest that there is a, a shortage. So Squealer changes reality. Now discriminate here that he's not changing what was said or done in the past, but about the current truth. Covering it in fancy language such as readjustment rather than reduction. What other claims can you include in your answer? Look back to the paragraph that demonstrate this technique. What were the pigs looking to accomplish here? Well, consider whether or not the farm is operating efficiently. In history, the Soviet Union had difficulty meeting with demand in food and other resources. <laughs> Consider the irony here, it was a shortage of food that led the uh, populace to overthrow Tsar Nicholas II. I think the party is very well aware of that, and they want to do everything in their power to prevent that from occurring, and in this instance, prevent that thought. Hence, we enter in the spontaneous demonstrations here. How do you command regularly scheduled spontaneous demonstrations? I hope you see the irony there. What propaganda technique? Well, it includes banners and slogans that uh, promote pride, long live animal farm, long live comrade Napoleon, four legs good, two legs bad, bleeding this affirmation of superiority, encouraging pride. Well, evidently, some of the four-legged animals have not been all that good. So when you consider the goal here, well, again, we, we want to uh, disguise the truth, but I think you just want to consider the goal of totalitarian governments, as I've said all along here, uh, in general. And finally, let's finish up with the last event. Uh, I'm going to ask you to name that event, but if you get to that last chapter, most readers respond with great outrage and, and anger and, and disappointment at what the pigs do. Dramatic irony works very strongly here as other animals, as well as the reader, recognize what's going on. In fact, the other animals try to warn Boxer that he's headed in a van uh, that indicates he's going to the knackers, the, the slaughterer, the slaughterhouse. Now, you may want to question why would the government get rid of this strong worker? Well, historically, Stalin did. He executed the very workers who were trying to build the infrastructure and the, the industry in the, in the country. And that really calls to question whether or not the true goal was actually to, to build industry or simply to use the laborers and have that power over them. In addition, for the test here, hint, hint, I want to point out that uh, Boxer did publicly disagree with Napoleon on the issue of Snowball's faithfulness. Propaganda technique there, a little bit of, uh, well, this promoting pride. And uh, the claim that uh, he was given expensive medicines but died nonetheless. Well, is that true? The, the name on the van, the, the, the truck, uh, hadn't been changed after it was bought by a veterinarian. Again, is that true? Hope you've taken good notes and that gives you some, uh, some good guidance and steers your, your thinking clearly that allow you to give a thorough and insightful answer.